Welcome back to my channel. In this tutorial, we will go over CloudFront. We will configure a static website using S3 and CloudFront. And as you could see, there is nothing set up right now. We will go th through this together from scratch. So what I like to do is I like to open up a couple tabs so that I have Amazon S3 in one and CloudFront in the other. And let's begin by creating our bucket. And when you create a bucket, this uh, name has to be unique. And that means unique in all of Amazon, not just your account. And for this bucket, we will block all public access. There will be no public access. And what this means is that when you create a file or a folder, if it had public access, you could send somebody the link, just like you would like with Google Drive, OneDrive, where you could send the link, same thing. So here's our bucket already created and we will upload some files into it. I'm going to upload a complete website. Um, this tutorial is not about how to create the specific website. I just downloaded a template that I found online and we will use it. Just have to upload it. And one interesting thing about this S3 bucket is usually when you use any of the other cloud providers to upload files, you would be done. But for whatever reason, you put the files there, but you're not done. If you went away from here, if you change the page, the file would not upload. You have to go through this entire process of configuring it, all these uh, options. And you could usually just go by the default. And as it uploads, it takes a few minutes. It tells you how long. It's usually not accurate on the estimated time remaining. It's, it's rather fast. And there we go. It's done. Now we'll exit out of here and go back and here is our folder and that's the name of the template amplify and in it, it has your index.html. And when we come here, this is the direct link to access this. And as you can see, I get access denied. And there are many options to configure for an S3 bucket. Um, we're not going to go all, over all of them. Let's just get started with our CloudFront distribution. And now you could select, we'll select web. And in the origin name, you you can pick that S3 bucket as you could see here. And we need to give it a path. And what does that mean? Well, as you saw, I put in the web template in a folder called Amplify. If you don't specify that, it will go to the root of the folder. But we want it to go here to Amplify. And I'm not specifying the specific file, which would be index.html for this website. And you could see the what's our default behavior if you want HTTP and HTTPS. Not sure why, but I don't even think picking between HTTP and HTTPS should be an option. I mean, you know, what's the point of not redirecting every single call 
to HTTPS. So I always set that. And you have many options that we could choose from. We're not going to use all of them, just some of them, just to get a basic website up and running in this cloud front. And one of the reasons why you would want to use this is to speed up your website. It might be a simple website for you, but it could also be one for your customers. And here's one of the options that you could use. You don't have to use all edge locations, but it's just better for best performance to use the recommended ones. And the alternate C name or domain name could just be a C name. So for example, I could call this cloudfront.toughnetworks.com and it would reply to a call to that subdomain. And obviously you have to configure your uh, route 53 if you're using route 53 for your DNS to go there. I'll do another video on that so that you could see it in, in production. Now this takes a bit of time, I would say about 10 to 15 minutes. But in the meantime, we also can talk about this CloudFront distribution. If a user is in Europe, when they access your website, they don't have to come all the way to the Americas to access this file, your website. They just access the edge location that's nearest to them in Europe. Same thing if they're in Brazil and so forth. And this is done. And it, the important thing here will be the domain name. That one. And this is where you can go to your website. Now, if we try to access this domain name, it gives us an error. And as you could see, if I select index.html, I still get an error message. Now, why is that? Well, there's a couple things that we need to configure and it's not obvious because some of the options are not available if you don't select a previous option. So here I will go through uh, the steps of creating a new CloudFront distribution. And as we scroll down through the options, it's not evident where we need to configure it so that it allows us this access. So I will show you where this option is located. And it's not restrict your access with signed URLs. Okay, so it's not there unless you select something, an origin domain and specify this path. Now, right under that, you see restrict bucket access. That's what we need to use. If we don't enable this, it will not work for you because this is not a public folder. Okay, so that's the option. Okay, now let's go back to the one that we did create and I'll show you how to modify it here. And the thing with CloudFront, anytime you make a change, it takes some time. So we go here, restrict bucket access. Yes. Do we want to create a new identity? Yes, because that's the identity that will have the rights to access. And here's where some people get stuck. Grant read permissions on bucket. If you say no, you will have to update this yourself and you will spend hours troubleshooting this. So select yes, update bucket policy. If you recall, the bucket that we created has no public access. So once we click yes, that we want to edit this, we now once again have to wait because it will be in progress. Remember, this is a dis distribution throughout the world, so it has to go and update this distribution.
And now after some time, you will see that the state is enabled and status deployed. And now when we come here and grab our domain, open up a new tab, we still get access denied. Now remember, this is pointing just to the Amplify folder. We need to specify index.html. If I knew how to spell or type index.html. And there we go. There is our website. And it's a fully functional website. And we have to remember, though, that this is a static website. So if you need dynamic content, for example, that uh, contact form will not work if it's using some type of uh, back end processing or needs back end processing. It would work if you hosted your contact form somewhere else and actually just uh, embedded it into your website. Now, one thing that I forgot to show you is our S3 bucket. Remember, we made modifications because we could not access the website at the beginning. We kept getting an access denied. Well, here, let's go back to this uh, bucket and look at our permissions. And it's still block all public access, right? All four of the new entries that Amazon puts on S3 buckets. But if we go to bucket policy, we will see that it has added a CloudFront origin access identity into it. And this is what allows us to have that website up and running, even though there is no public access on the bucket. This is a very cost effective way of hosting your own website. Now in a future video, I will show you how to get your own domain name and then create the CNAME entry back into this bucket. And there's other cool features too. So in part two, I will also show you how to restrict access to your CloudFront distribution. I hope you have enjoyed this video and learned a little something about CloudFront and AWS. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe to this channel. I will be providing more and more videos and tutorials for you.